I want it. I got it. I want it. I got it. I want it. I got it. So I used basic sewing tools and three yards of sweater knit fabric. So I always look at the line art of a sewing pattern to see how complex or how easy a sewing pattern will be. And so I'm just looking here to see what type of measurements I will need to accomplish this, um, this tunic or this top. So I will need some vertical and horizontal measurements from elbow to the other elbow. We will definitely need some measurements for the cuff. And I have a cowl option that I want to do. So that's that little drawing on the neck that I have. I'm also taking my head measurement to see how much room I need for my neck opening. Once I take those measurements, I just transfer them onto my fabric. So 48 was what I had from elbow to elbow. And so I'm just measuring that with my measuring tape and then cutting off the fabric. Now for the length from my shoulder to where I want the tunic to end, it was actually, I think about 27.5, but I didn't want to waste the fabric. And so I just used the full length of the fabric. Here I am measuring the back of my neck measurement folded in half and I have a pin placed there. From the line art, you can see that the tunic is slanted from the neck to just past your elbow. And so I am going to measure about three inches down and then I will cut in a slant all the way up to the neck. If you are new here, welcome. If you're returning, hey, my name is Monday. I'm the voice behind the channel. Be sure to like and subscribe. The part, neck part where I placed the pin, I will cut a slanted curve just so we have a neck opening. And then I will be cutting just the front piece, just the front piece at a wider curve. And I would measure from my neck to however deep I want my cowl to be. And so I think I set it at about four or five inches. Remember, we are just cutting one layer of the fabric. This is not for both layers. So um, be sure to do that as I am showing here. Next, I am cutting the edge at the bottom of my tunic. And so I think I measured about six inches up and then cut it in a curve as I'm showing here. Also note that my fabric is folded in half, so this allows me to work on both edges at the same time. Next, I'm taking my cuff measurement, the length and the width. Remembering it's for two cuffs. And I'm also making sure that the width is the stretchy side. Also remember to taper your sleeve because your elbow to your wrist gets smaller. Next, I am measuring out my cowl turtleneck. And like I said, I don't want to waste fabric. So I'm using all the fabric that I just cut out from the rest of the, the tunic. And for the length, I will use the circumference measurement I took for my head. So that I know that I could put my head through. So these are the pieces that I have um, already cut out. You can go ahead and hem your cuffs. If you don't have a serger, you can use a zigzag stitch. That's what I used for the entirety of this video. So hem that using a zigzag stitch. Next, you will be joining your front and your back pieces for your tunic. And so you can go ahead and sew where I am pointing there. Once you have hemmed your cuff and have sewn the back and the front pieces, you want to connect your cuff to the seam of the front and the back piece. And you can pin those down so they're easier for you to work with. And then you can go ahead and sew that down. You can use a zigzag stitch. 
Also make sure that your cuff is centered. Mine was slightly off, but hey, uh, progress, not perfection. So this is what you should have after you finish hemming and joining the cuff and the bodice seam together. Next, I am closing the cuff and the side seam. So you want to pin those down all the way down to the end of your tunic, and then you can go ahead and sew that down. As I have mentioned, if you do not have a serger, it's okay. You can use your um, just a normal sewing machine and you can zigzag stitch. For the seam, I used a straight stitch, but to just clean up the edge, I did a zigzag stitch just over the edge so it kind of like closes and gives a clean finish. And because it's knit fabric, you can't really see. So yes. Okay, so once done, this is what we have and we're left with our neck area. I did try it on and it was kind of snug and it wasn't going to give the cowl effect. So I'm just adding a bit more length um, to my neck area. So I'm adding about three inches, two, three inches down and I'm just uh, cutting out a curved, um, curved area as I am showing. And here I am just going to take my head measurement that I had taken um, earlier to make sure that this um, opening can let my head through. <laughs> Onto the cowl turtleneck, go ahead and sew down the edge of your um, cowl and you want to hem the top part as well. Once that's done, I'm connecting it to the neck hole and so I want my seam to uh, be in the back because I don't want to see that uh, and so I'm just um, finding the center of my back um, opening and then I will add the seam of the turtleneck to the center part that I just pinned. Totally random but why is it called a turtleneck? Let me know in the comments if you know why it's called a turtleneck. Anyways, you can go ahead and pin right sides together of your turtleneck, cowl turtleneck, and your neck um, hole opening. And once you're done, pin once you're done pinning those, you can go ahead and sew that down using a zigzag stitch. Okay, so once we are done sewing those pieces together, this is what it should look like. So we are pretty much done. All we need to do now is just hem the bottom. And again, if you don't have a serger, just a zigzag stitch um, all through the hem and that should secure your hem. This was my final look. And this is how I styled it. Listen, I can't be great because I, my broke little roommate always wants to be in my pictures. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial, this sew along, this video, and I will see you in the next video. Be sure to like and subscribe and have a great day.